I'm Jane Sellers and I've been involved with art in Yorkshire for a very long time and one of the best people I know is Tom Wood. I'm here at the Watermark Gallery in Harrogate. We're here today to talk about, um, well, lots of things, I think, Tom, but we're, we're surrounded by this, this new exhibition, so I want to talk about that. But um, just thinking of, about, uh, do you remember when we first met as me as curator and you as artist? Do you remember where that was? I, I do. It was at Harewood House. Yes. When I was painting a portrait of Lord and Lady Harewood. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's a, quite a while ago now. It was quite a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was, um, and you and you had the studio in in um, in Halifax at the time. And I, I remember going there to watch you in action. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had a studio at Dean Clough uh, and strangely enough, after a long circuitous journey, I'm actually back at Dean Clough at the moment and most of the paintings in this exhibition mm. have been painted in my studio at Dean Clough. Very different studio to the one I had originally, um, but it is nice to be back there. Yes, it's it's a wonderful place because you had a you had the big studio, was it in Batley? That I did. Yes, uh, I had a, a, an enormous studio at uh, Red Brick Mill, uh, which is a kind of small warehouse complex, uh, and it was a former woolen mill, and I had the top floor of one of the mill buildings. I was lucky, really, in so far as. I set out to do just my own work up there and then people would come along and ask if they could have a piece of bit of advice or if they if I was teaching could they you know join in or and initially it was friends people I knew mm -hmm. retired architects and designers and so on who came along um, and then gradually word spread around and I ended up with quite a group really about 20 people who came regularly um, and they were lovely, they were really lovely people. Uh, many of them retired, so most of them mature. Uh, and many of them now have uh, become professional artists in their own right, which is nice to see, really. Would you say that teaching was a very important part of what you do? I think, yes. I think teaching... I never set out to be a teacher. Mm. I just kind of grew into it, really. Uh, I enjoy talking about art, uh, I enjoy listening to other people's journeys into art uh, and over the years I've been really fortunate in being offered teaching in various colleges, universities mm. and so on and, and from that I've, I've sort of gained in confidence and also learned an enormous amount to be perfectly honest both with the people I've taught with who have been fantastic really experienced teachers and artists, tremendous artists, um, but also in the students you work with. That's, that's the, the secret about teaching that is not often mentioned, is it works both ways. You know, you learn as much as you give, mm. really. And uh, one of the things I, I said uh, when we finally closed uh, Red Brick Mill was I said, I'm going to really miss this this my personal laboratory. And it was, it yeah. really was. You know, I was working yeah. with people doing all kinds of interesting yeah. things and I would learn as much as I would give really yeah. to them. And uh, so yeah, teaching I think is a fantastic thing to do as an artist because you encounter all kinds of interesting, unexpected, unusual ideas that you can either process in your own way and deal with or you can reject if you want to mm. uh, or you can build up you know and, and think well it's a good idea but I can improve it make it better I can change it mm. so yeah I, I've always felt that my life as a teacher has been one of give and take really completely yeah. and most of the well in fact all the people I've taught and um, uh, remain friends and uh, and I'm still and through the magic of Instagram I'm still very much in touch with many of them mm. so it, it's lovely yeah I feel I've got a community yeah. and I, I remember I remember going to see you there and 
and I think it was about around the time of a project that um, we we and I worked on together, which was that you were you were you were, you were already you were committed to having a an exhibition of new work at the Mercer mm -hmm. Art Gallery, and it and it kind of coincided with something that we'd been wanting to do for ages, which was to persuade Northern Ballet mm -hmm. to um, do something with us, anything. And, and there was a long, there was a long wait, and then suddenly, the um, director said, "Yeah, I think we will do that thing in Harrogate." And and there's a most, it was one of the most wonderful things we ever did there. I thought, yeah. which was that uh, <clears throat> some of the the dancers went to your studio, didn't they? They did. And they did. And, and and they were the subject of drawings. For yes. your group for you. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I I formed a really lovely relationship with Tony, uh, Toby, not Tony, Toby, the, uh, who was the principal dancer mm. there at that time. And he was a t fantastic uh, dancer, wonderful mm. performer, but also a really good mentor to the younger dancers. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and the idea was they would choose, choose a piece of my work and they would base th their a, a, a performance based on that piece of work, an interpretation of that piece of work. And the idea was that the young dancers got to learn from the principal dancer, from Toby, who mentored them in their dances. So I was just the, the, the subject, if you like, of their performances. Uh, and it was, it was just one of the most uh, moving. It was, kind of it was stunning, wasn't it? Because yeah, fantastic. They, you did those wonderful paintings of them, of Toby and yeah. the others. Yeah. And then, and they were on show with other work of yours. Yeah. And then we had the events in the gallery, <clears throat> where in between exhibitions in the big gallery, mm. there's just this big space. Mm. And I've never, I've never known anything like it. It was just these wonderful dancers. Mm. And, and we were, everyone's very close to them. They come whizzing in, didn't they? And yes, they did. It was absolutely marvellous. Yeah, and they're so talented. Uh, and, brilliant. Uh, just yeah. fantastic, absolutely yeah. Yeah. Uh, inspiring, really. The only thing was I've got photographs from the time mm. and, uh, and there's photographs of the dancers lined up and me and I've just, it, you don't realise how big you are till you stand next to a, yes. an 18 year old youthful yeah. Yeah. dancer who's like a slim, beautiful, yeah. Yeah. extraordinary. I thought of them like little fawns, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the performances were both athletic, but also really intelligent, thoughtful, mm -hmm. things I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I didn't think that about my work, but mm -hmm. they'd clearly seen that in it. So, yeah, it was really I powerful. Did, they just worked so brilliantly well together. I yeah, it, it just did, yeah. did yeah. it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. And some of those paintings that you made are now in the collection at the Mercer Art Gallery, aren't they? They are, yeah. yeah. They are, yeah. yeah. And uh, I did a large portrait of the two principals. Mm. Uh, and it wasn't kind of a portrait, it was a sort of, almost a sort of metaphysical type of painting. I was trying to express yeah. something more than just the way they looked but it was the yeah. way they were, who yeah. they are as people and, um, and what, what came across when they performed, really. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I love that relationship and I have to thank you for that because that was all you're doing. Yeah, it was wonderful. But it, but it, was, yeah. it was wonderful. But we did an exhibition in Harrogate mm -hmm. a few years ago called Art and Yorkshire mm -hmm. and, and in your portrait of um, Arthur Haig was in that, wasn't mm, it? The collector. Was. Yes. And also um, of Alan Bennett, mm. uh, which from the National Portrait Gallery. Yes. And and I was I was <clears throat> looking around, looking at your portraits online. Oh, you've got a portrait in just about every gallery in this country. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you've got the yeah. you've got. Very well represented in all the Yorkshire ones, you know, like Hepworth yeah. and the, the um, University of Leeds Gallery. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, Cartwright Hall is a big one, isn't it? The, the Bradford. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they've got some really nice pieces. They seem to want a, I had a, a retrospective there 
and they then seem to want to build a kind of representative collection of my work. So I've, mm. so I've always felt that if people wanted to see my work at various phases, Cartwright Hall is a really good place to go and see it. Mm. Uh, and they've been very good to me over many years, really. Um, a lovely gallery, one well worth visiting. But yeah, portraits, it, 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 people sort of know me for portraits. Mm. I think as much to do with the sitters as to do with what I've mm. done, mm. who I am. I mean, to have the opportunity to paint Barbara Windsor was just like bonkers. I guess I didn't know you'd done her until oh, I yeah, found Barbara I Windsor did. in there as well. Yeah, yeah. and to yeah. sit there and have lunch with Barbara Windsor, you know. Did she and, talk all the time? Uh, she did talk a lot, <laughs> uh, but she was absolutely lovely and yeah. generous and cooperative mm. and not at all starry in any way. And yet everybody recognised it. So wherever you went with her, Everybody would go, it's Barbara Windsor, it's Barbara Windsor, you know, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, so she was extraordinary, really extraordinary and and lovely, absolutely lovely. Uh, so, yeah, so often it's the sitters. So I've had a very odd existence as an artist because I've had times when I've been sort of doing things which are fairly public uh, and, and out there and people kind of are going to see the end result and, mm. and, and mm. it's going to be a very public event and occasion. And then I've had other times where I'm, I'm just very private. I'm just in my studio and I'm just mm. getting on with my own ideas and, and developing sort of themes that interest me and working like that. I'm working with galleries in this area, you know, in Yorkshire. I'm a, I'm a big believer in, uh, in regionalism, if you want to call it that. Uh, in the importance of the museums and galleries in your region uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and the way in which they represent creative practice mm. in their time, of which you were very much a part of, Jane, as a curator, uh, creating opportunities and situations in which artists like me got to thrive, really. Uh, I think it's so important to do that uh, because otherwise, the arts are kind of stagnates. You know, one of the things I've always felt about being an artist, and I've done it now for 45, nearly 50 years, a long time I've painted, is that the one thing that stops people, uh, uh, stops people being an artist is neglect. Is that mm. simple thing that nobody cares, you yes. know? And, and if you're an artist, the one thing you want is that sense that somebody cares, somebody's bothered. Uh, mm. And uh, so it's wonderful. It's wonderful to have a kind of network, however small even, to be perfectly honest. I used to say to my students, uh, you only need four or five people who the next time they see you, they say, what are you doing? What are you up to? Mm. You know, uh, because then you've got a chance to talk about it, to have a conversation, to test things out, um, to invite people to come and look and so on. But the fact that you do get artists who just sort of wither away, just from neglect, just nobody bothers, nobody cares, no gallery is interested, and so on. Um, and that's a shame. Yeah, because... and, that, and that's right. That's, as you say, I was very dedicated to um, working with Yorkshire artists and in all sorts of different ways, mm. and to be able to show their work. You know, like having the Harrogate open was mm. a good thing to do. Um, oh, ma many other things. I, I used to do mentoring for uh, the Arts Council, mm. and I'd go all over, <laughs> all over Yorkshire, <laughs> yeah. talking to artists who were worried. <laughs> yes, I had a quote. I'll just read to you here. <laughs> here we are. Yes, and this is about making art. And you yes. said, or oh, wrote. Um, all my paintings take time, and as I get older, they seem to take longer, and I seem not to care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just, I thought that was rather, rather wonderful. And also how you, you, you like to live with a work for quite a long time, yeah. and to revise it, and you go, go back to it. Yeah. Um, and you say, some might call it tinkering, others fettling. Mm. Yes, that's very Yorkshire, isn't it? <laughs> um, 
And you say, I think of it as a long meandering conversation in which subjects appear and then fade away. I just thinking, if you could say a bit, a bit more about that. And I'm thinking about the, the moving on to the paintings around here, because yeah. they're not portraits. No, they're no, not, no. They're not dancers. So talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. I, get, I tend to work in phases. So I get fascinations with things. And, uh, and sometimes that fascination is something very trivial almost really and it mm. interests me to then elevate it into something most, with great significance. Mm. Um, some, I try and create paintings which have a, a sort of enigma almost within them so that mm. they can be questioned and engaged with and people ponder over them and wonder. And sometimes I do that myself. I don't know entirely what the painting means, but I know I need to make it. Mm. And I feel its meaning will uh, appear and evolve in the making of it. Mm. So I don't, so it's very rare that I set out with a specific idea. It's almost never actually. I never, I have sketchbooks mm. full of drawings, 99% of which I never ever do. <laughs> but I just put them down there because I mm. think, well, you know, it's a good idea. But when you sit in a studio and you're there on your own for quite a bit of time, your mind wanders, your thoughts develop, uh, you question things, you reconsider things, mm. you put things, the classic thing, you face it to the wall, you forget about it, you come back a month later, you have another look at it and you think to yourself, is it any good? You know, what's the point? Is it worth doing? Mm. I've been painting now for so long, I don't need to do more paintings. I don't need to, you know, I don't have an agenda where it's like I need to do 30 paintings, I need to do 20 paintings. Occasionally I work with younger artists and they have that urgency about doing work. And I understand that, absolutely. And I, and I would encourage that and say the more you do, the better, the better your work will become. But I don't feel that now because I've done so much work. I feel the work that I, I'm going to do now in the time that I've got is I want it to be good and I want it to, I don't want to be apologetic about it. I want to be confident in its worth. Uh, and the fact that I'm, times, as you get older, time gets more and more valuable. And so if you're going to give time this valuable thing, this that you've got to the practice of making paintings, mm. you might as well try and do some good ones, you know, and really try and get, do some sort of the best you can really. And, and you've got to satisfy yourself yeah. and you've got to find a method, a means by which you can be honest with yourself, you know. The means I've got is I've got my wife, who we've been married now for God, she'll kill me if I don't get it right. Uh, think about 47 years, I think yeah. we've been married. Yeah, if we haven't, I'm sorry, Lou. You know? <laughs> uh, but we have been married, I think it is 47 years. So my wife has known me as a virtually a teenager, uh, be, where I was dreaming about being an artist, but I wasn't an artist. Mm. And she's watched me all those years going through so she knows if it's any good and if it isn't she really does she's got and she she knows it on the basis of all the art she's encountered but also on the work that i've done so she can quote and she'll say that's not as good as what you did three years so ago she'll tell you she won't she tell that oh, <laughs> never holds back never yeah. never ever yeah. uh to the point where i i sometimes want to say just be a little kind. I'm feeling a bit vulnerable at the moment, you know. Um, because sometimes with your work as well, you, you're not sure yourself. You know, you, you do it and you're working on it and it's over a period of time and it and it yeah. can be a bit uncertain at times, a bit fragile, yeah. a bit there are bits you want to hang on to, there are bits that you're very unsure about. Um, and so there are times when you want to be bombastic and very, you know, almost destructive and think, I can make this happen and you feel very bold and you get your big brush and you 
scrub mm -hmm. things out and so on and uh, and you feel very confident in what you're doing then there are other times you feel as timid as a mouse really you're tiptoeing up to your painting mm -hmm. and you're thinking I don't want to spoil it I don't want to mess it up I've invested three months in this thing you know mm -hmm. and so you get you go a little more carefully but uh, yeah I just I just love painting I, I, I'm, I just feel it has so much to offer in terms of enriching your life as a person that I just love I feel it's feel very lucky to be involved in it and to and to have found and made a life uh, in which I can do it you know um, and uh, and I hope something of that is is seen in the work that I produce yeah. you know um, I don't want it to be complacent I want it to be uh, joyful thing, yes. in a way 